I can't believe it's been 10 years. It's, it seems like it was you know, la uh, last year. It doesn't seem that long ago at all. That was definitely that was the best time I ever had playing baseball, even uh, throughout my professional career, uh, getting a chance to play with the Phillies. Really fortunate to be a part of, and, and we, were, we were hungry. We were hungry to win, and uh, anybody that played us knew they, uh, they had a tough shot of beating us. Welcome back to the Bulldog Insider. We're pleased to be joined now by Bryant John Antiola, sports writer at the Fresno Bee. He was on the Bulldogs beat, and in 2008, he covered the team from Biden Field all the way to Omaha. Bryant John, a lot of the players have said when they beat Arizona State in the Super Regionals, that's when they knew that they could win the whole thing. When did it become real from your perspective? Well, I definitely think Arizona State was the best team that they faced, but each level, each stage that they got to, you always question if they can continue this. Was this just a, a lucky run, a lucky upset? Uh, but they kept going. It wasn't until about the second game of the College World Series championship against Georgia that I felt like, oh, they can actually win this because they lost the first game against them and then they were down early against them in the second game, but they rallied. And it wasn't until then that I figured they're going to win this because they have their ace coming up for game three with Justin Wilson. It's been 10 years. What stands out to you today about that championship run? You know, I just think the, uh, the level of, of talent and opponents that they were facing throughout, you know, a lot of major leaguers, a lot of pro athletes that they, that they faced uh, during that run, and they beat them all, obviously. Um, and I think that was just, it was just a great underdog story, just beating team after team and, and uh, defying, defying lots of odds along the way. You mentioned underdogs. We've all used the phrase lowest seeded team in any sport to win an NCAA national championship. Do you think what the Bulldogs did is the greatest underdog story in sports history? I do, and I also think it's one of the most underappreciated ones because if you take a look at where this team started, they, they lost or they, they split a series with a, a Division One team or a Division One team that was just starting in, in UC Davis. They were four games below 500 at one point. They were just 16 and 16 in non-conference play. It did not look like they had much of a chance come postseason, and they ran the table. They looked like the most dominant team. Everyone was hot, but they also were pushing a lot of the buttons because a lot of guys who had bad regular season numbers, they want they went on to perform really well in uh, in situational uh, well in situational uh, times and stuff. I can't imagine how many stories you wrote on that team that season and in the years since. But you were there. You saw them win the title in person. What was that like to watch the dogs win all those elimination games up to and including when Steve Detweiler caught the final lap? Yeah, it was it was quite surprising because uh, we, we never really knew how long it was going to last. Uh, you know, I think we had to buy some clothes. We had to buy, you know, do, do some laundry in Omaha because some of us had thought this is just going to be a two and out series uh, for them. And they 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 came out immediately and smoked rice. They beat uh, North Carolina, and that's when you started thinking, okay, we're, they, they have a good shot of potentially going deep after starting the College World Series 2-0. and um, And it was just amazing. You know, the, the, the beginning of Omaha, the College World Series, when you have the fan bases of eight different teams plus the local fans there, there's, a, there's quite a great energy there that it's kind of a match from what I've seen, you know, where just a lot of guys enthusiastic, enthusiastic about their team, about the College World Series in general. There's just a great energy, a great vibe when you're over there. Now, out of all the players who turned pro from that team, only Justin Wilson and Justin Miller are currently in the majors. And Miller's a guy who's been up and down from AAA. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I think it just kind of, uh, it, it just solidifies the idea that they were underdogs. They, this was not a team that was full of uh, a bunch of uh, pro talent that was coming in. Uh, they, had a got, they had a lot of uh, good college players, a good collection of them. But they weren't guys that you immediately saw uh, as prospects to move on to the majors and and they faced teams that did have a lot of prospects you know that North Carolina team they had a, at least three pitchers that are still in the majors and they beat that North Carolina team two out of three times uh, for example and this team here they had Justin Wilson like you said and Justin Miller who have who've, who've uh, stayed in the pros and, and a couple of guys who've played in the minors and some guys who played a little bit in the pros and they're gone now and uh, yeah they're just they, they're just a great uh, underdog story how do you think this team will be remembered in 10 more years, 2028? I still think this is going to be one of the proudest moments in, in Fresno, in Fresno State history. Uh, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you know, it, this could very well be, the way college sports is going, this could very well be Fresno State's last national championship with, with the haves and have-nots uh, becoming, that gap getting uh, wider and wider. So this is, this is definitely one to relish. That's a conversation for another time. He's Brian John Antiola. You can read his work in the Fresno Bee. Brian John, thank you so much for the time today. We appreciate it. Thanks, Andrew.